something that we were talking about before we started playing and something that's of interest to me and I think to have a lot of our audience is that one of the things that you've been working on in building the game is building tools. And you've just published a tool called Depot, which I was telling you before we started talking that I was, I ironically kind of ran into, maybe it was a predecessor of Depot, as I was researching ways to handle item databases in JSON, I was looking at it from a Unity perspective and saw some of the work that you were doing with CastleDB a couple of months or a year or two ago and was kind of looking at that and then now you've just released Depot. So for folks who are interested in checking that out, what is it? <laughs> I mean, the first thing I think I'll say is to kind of like bring it back a little bit to our conversation about like being an indie developer. Yeah. I think one of my perspectives on what it means to be indie is like, if you can't make a commercially successful game, I consider sort of like the MO of indie development to be able to empower the rest of the indie community. So mm. a lot of indie developers, I mean, unless you came from AAA, which a lot of people have, there's not like shared institutional knowledge amongst indie game developers because we're all disparate people scattered around the globe. So the only thing that we have is sort of like the internet and some of our friends. Yeah. So I kind of consider it, I've taken it on as like a personal responsibility as a self-proclaimed indie developer to be able to like give back to the community in the wake of stuff that I'm making. So when I'm I'm working on Cantata in part, I'm like making this game, but also I'm trying to make stuff that I can then give back to the community as like a thing. Cause I've, I mean, like your tutorials, like other things that like contribute to libraries and try to basically be like a good citizen of yeah. the indie games community by helping people out to kind of like build up like tools and resources and workflows and blogs and whatever. So that when someone's in like my position four years ago, they can see all the stuff that I've done and I have to do all the same things. So yeah. I consider things like blogging to be really important. I consider tool making to be really important. And I think a lot of times it's easy to sort of see it as like ancillary and to degree it is. But at the same time, I found that that stuff often is like, brings me a lot more personal satisfaction sort of day to day than like, working on Cantata, which is like a pretty big project. So the idea and the reason that Depot exists and my other tools and stuff have existed is not because it's like altruistic or whatever. It's that like, I consider it part of my job as an indie game developer to be able to give back deliberately to people and do so in a way that's like well-documented and it works. It's not just like, yeah. you know, I think some indie people will be like, here's my engine. And they just like throw it up on GitHub. It's like and there's random, like a, yeah. Whatever. And it's like, okay, yeah, but like, you got to help people out. So what I've tried to do with my stuff, get to deep on a second, but sure, like sure, yeah. I contributed to the Steamworks library that Facebook maintains. I programmed all their lobby code. I worked on the Castle DB Unity thing, which yeah. was like basically a way to get Castle DB working in Unity. I try to publish blog posts on making stuff. I published this big blog post on like how to do peer-to-peer -peer networking really easily. You know, it doesn't have to be the greatest stuff, but there's this weird sort of thing that happens in game development where, so I, I don't know what the best way to describe it is, but basically like, if you imagine it as sort of like, if I start my finger over here, where you start and where you end up in terms yeah. of games. And then issue is that there's a lot of resources for here and there's a lot of resources for here, but this middle area is sort of defined by the specificity and the specifics of what you're making such yeah. that all of a sudden, as soon as you get past this like Beginner. generic 2D platformer thing, there's just nothing. And there's yeah. nothing in part because everyone is after that point making something weird and different. So if I'm looking for something online for something I'm specifically trying to do that feels like general use case enough, but no one is doing it. I'm like, oh, there needs to be a resource about this because before I published the Steamworks um, lobby thing, I was like, how do I use Steamworks? How do I integrate with Steam? And there was like, nothing that was just like there was zero information that just said like this is what steamworks is this is what an app id is this is how this thing works these are the apis i think valve has done a little bit more since then but before that also the documentation was private so you yeah. couldn't actually see it so i was like fuck i need to write something that just says like what the fuck steamworks what is what is it yeah and a lot of other people go through that same process and they do it and they learn all the things and then they like tell their friends but I'm out here, you know, mostly by myself. I don't have this community of people. And I'm like, there's at least way more people like me that are also looking at these things being like, 
how, what, how do I start? All yeah. that to say, like, I, I definitely consider, if you say you're an indie developer, I would say that you're one of your main jobs, not just making your game, but it's making it easier for other indie game developers to make their projects, which then <laughs> can bring us to Depot. <laughs> yeah. So first of all, so you made a game data editor, right? Which I think is definitely sits in that intermediate zone, right? That a lot of people are like, it's kind of one of those things that you, you only know that you need or you start to need when you're actually making like a commercial project or a larger project, right? Yeah. It's like if you're doing a little yeah, game yeah. jam or a little tiny thing, you just hard code in all the data doesn't matter, right? But then you start to get to this point where you're like, whoa, I might actually have a thousand items here. What, are, you know, am I going to hard code these? How do I like, manage what? a thousand items? Yeah. Yeah. I th yeah. So I think like, yeah. So Depot is specifically a game data editor. It is heavily inspired by a uh, Castle DB, which yeah. is a very similar thing that basically what Castle DB and Depot allow you to do is that it basically gives you an editor that's like a spreadsheet that allows you to edit structured data that's structured in a JSON file. With the key fact being that the data model for the JSON file itself is saved inside JSON of the data. So what that means is like, imagine you had like a JSON file and then you had a key that was called like attack. Yeah. And there's a number after that, right? Imagine that you want to then ingest that file into your game and then do something with that attack value. Yeah. Well, the attack value can't be a string because it's, it's a number, but then you have to decide when you're ingesting it, like, oh, is that a float or an int or a short yeah. or a long? You as someone, imagine that some, like a game designer just gave yeah. you that JSON file, then you've now got to implement in your program, you just got to kind of make an assumption. Right. Whereas what Depot will do is that when you add in a field called like attack, there will also be an additional um, entry in that JSON file that says like, oh, this key attack is specifically an int and it's got this range and it's got these values and whatever. The idea is that the data model for the data that is stored is baked into the file itself such that when you ingest the file into whatever your application is, you can actually look at the depot file not only to pull out the data, but also pull out how to understand that data. What I can see now is a little bit of a narrative where I've always been sort of interested in data management and games. When I discovered Castle DB, I was like, this is really cool. But Castle DB is very much written to be used with the hacks programming language and yeah. especially um, some frameworks in it like OpenFL or Heaps or Flixel or whatever. Yeah. Heaps is amazing. I think low key, I would probably use Heaps after Cantata on stuff because it's great. Castle DB is like very much geared towards hacks development. Yeah. So at the time I was like, this is fine, whatever. I can just use C sharp. I'll use like code generation to basically generate type safe data management from Castle DB, which is sort of what it's meant to do where once you enter these data objects in your game data editor, you actually can like access the data of that database in a type safe manner because you know all the types and data values at the time. So then that happened and then like fast forward a little bit, I'm working on Cantata and I'm like, well, Cantata has got a huge modding component. I need to be able to load in data files from basically streaming assets in Unity yeah. to be able to load them into the game. So I need to actually have some sort of structured data inside of my assets folder. And it's like, well, I could let people use Castle DB, but that's sort of hacksy. Like what's a way to actually let people edit data files for the game in a way that's like really easy to do. And I was like, well, and then at the same time, what was happening was that C Sharp 9 was announced. And part of C Sharp 9 is that they're adding in source generators. So source generators are kind of like what Hacks uses for macros, where basically it's able to take in a source file and actually put into the compiler the types that you might generate from that data. So what that means is that you don't actually have to generate like what I'm doing in the importer for Castle DB was that I was actually generating source code files that represented the data that then had to be imported into Unity's asset database. If once slash if Unity gets C sharp nine support, you can actually type safely access all of your data from a depot file without actually needing to have the source file itself inside of your project, which is sort of like, holy shit. Yeah, um, I'm like, my head is spinning a little bit. Like I, I followed as far as generating source files from the castle file, right? That, that you're basically generating because if you have a type, right? That's the types in the JSON, there's no code ready yep. to 
be that type, right, or to represent that type, so then you generate the C-sharp code that represents that, or that says it's an ant, or it's a Because you have all the data that's object. built into the depot file. Yeah. yeah, but this part I don't get. So what? <laughs> well, so let, me, what? Let, me take, let, me take a, let me take a step back too, yeah. just to talk a little more about depot. So basically yeah. there's Castle DB, which is a game data editor. They call it a structured static database. Yeah. Um, depot is fundamentally the same thing. It's it's a structured static database editor for JSON data that allows yeah. you to edit data really for anything. It's not game specific, but basically edit JSON data like a spreadsheet, but locally as well. So what Depot, the way Depot differs from Castle DB in one major way is that Depot is just a Visual Studio Code extension. Yeah. So you can just open like right now, you're listening to this podcast, you can open up Visual Studio Code go to the extension little browser, type in depot, press install, and you now got this editor in your project. You can make a new depot file, which is just .dpo, and then it'll use, so what depot does, it uses this thing that Visual Studio Code added a few months ago, which is this idea of a custom editor. So because Visual Studio Code is fundamentally like a browser, it's using Electron, it has the ability to actually, instead of rendering like a text editor like it does if you're opening source files you can actually render essentially a website in place of that thing but pass the data from the file to the web view as they, as they call it so what i can do then is i use the custom editor to basically build this sort of like build like my own version of castle db inside of code so if you like clone down your someone's repo, you can click the depot file and you'll see the editor and all the data just right there inside of code. <laughs> so there's no need to like, like I think a lot of people will use like CSV or Google Sheets for stuff like this. Right. But there's still the issue there where like, imagine like Matt, you like change a value in a Google Sheet or something. There's not really a good ledger of the fact that you changed that. Yeah, yeah, but then yeah, also yeah. you've then got to like pull that file down and parse the CSV and then do all this stuff and like, Right. That's like annoying and also it's require access. And then if you, whatever, it sucks. But yeah. like with Depot, you can basically have your Depot file in line inside of your repo, clone down the repo, see the changes. And when you commit your changes, it commits to source control. And because yeah. it's a JSON file that's separated by new lines, like if someone changes the value of an attack or something, you'll see that inside the commit that the data itself has changed. Or if it, the schema was changed, you changed a variable name, like that stuff is just part of the ledger of the development cycle. So yeah. the idea is to basically take Castle DB is sort of like the canonical example of this, but it's an external program. So the idea was to say like, what if I just bring that to the IDE? Everyone's already yeah. using Visual Studio Code. It's the most popular code editor in the world. If I just make it where anybody now that has Visual Studio Code has access to Depot without needing to download some other external release, that like smooths out the whole right. process. Right, right, right.